Hi, I'm Brett Larkin. Welcome back to 18 Days of Yoga for your body and soul that I'm hosting with Yoga Outlet. Today's focus is preparing the body to come into headstand. This flow is designed to heat the body, open the shoulders, and strengthen the muscles that you need to eventually be able to come into headstand on your own in the center of the room. If you have a strap, have it nearby as it may be helpful later on. Otherwise, just come to the top of the mat. Take your feet hip width apart. Take a deep breath in and exhale all the way. Good, a little different. I want you to interlace your hands. So make that fist that we've been making a couple times now throughout the challenge. And I want you to take it up over your head and bend at your elbows. So you're in um, this shape in which you're making sort of a V on the ceiling. And then from here, I want you to notice everything that just happened in your body. So for me, my um, my butt just kind of stuck out, my low back arched, and my front ribs arched when I took my hands into this position, right, from Tadasana. So these are all things that are likely prone to happen to me when I come into headstand, is what we're doing right now is Tadasana with the arms like this, is really headstand upside down. So the first thing I want you to do is lengthen your tailbone to the space between your heels, keeping your arms up like this. Draw your navel up and in. Knit your front ribs closed and maybe take your weight, your upper body, a little bit more forward than you think it needs to be. So you really feel this line of integrity from the crown of the head to the space between your heels. Good, and then narrow your elbows in towards one another and glide your shoulder blades down and back. So that's a pretty complex movement of you know, gently squeezing the elbows towards one another, but then also gliding the shoulder blades down your back so your muscles, your trapezius muscles are far away from your ears. Take three breaths here, just feeling this really um, long spine and this line that has a lot of integrity to it. This is headstand, just right side up instead of upside down. So breathe in and breathe out. Good, breathe in. Breathe out. Last breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Inhale. You can let the arms extend now. So reach all the way up. Maybe keep that fist and take a little feel good back bend. Rotate to the right and left. Feel good twist. Good. And then exhale. Fold forward. Inhale. Half lift. Exhale, step it back to plank pose, but we're gonna lower to our forearms right away. So right away, drop down to the left and right forearm, and then just see what this feels like. So your shoulders are directly over your elbows, press your heels back, curl your tailbone forward, so your hips are moving towards your chin. And if you really wanna fire up your abs before this class, do yesterday's sequence before doing this one, and your abs will already be all fired up. One more breath. Good, exhale, lower the hips down. We'll take a little sphinx pose. Draw the shoulders down and back. Imagine you're moving the mat towards your body, so your mat would crumple up this way because you're really energetically dragging the elbows back and send the heart forward. Two breaths here, really full. Tap into that three count inhale, three count exhale. Good, last breath. Mm, take the hands underneath the shoulders, press back into your child's pose. So those can be, that can be knees as wide as the mat or knees touching to see what feels good for you today. I always like to sway a little bit side to side in my child's pose. I'm taking the hips from left to right. Good, and as you're ready, begin extending through the arms and we're gonna come into a couple details here. I want you to press the left and right palm into the mat as hard as you can in this child's pose. So straighten the arms, press the palms down, spread the fingers far apart. Good, and then imagine that your two hands were on dials and you were turning those dials inward. So you were rotating the left hand to the left and the right hand in towards the right. So both dials you're rotating in towards one another. So feel that energy, and that energy is in the forearms and the palms. Good, and now in opposition to that, I want you to spin your biceps out towards the left and right of the room. So the biceps are spinning outward, the opposite direction in the forearms, and just feel how engaged your arms are when you make that happen. 
press down through the knuckles of the hands more, keep spinning the biceps out into the left and right of the room. So this is very energetic, but you should feel your arms super strong and engaged right now. Good, and then keep that engagement, come onto all fours, keep that engagement. So think spinning the hands in, spinning the biceps out, and press back into your downward facing dog and just notice how that feels. Good, breathe in. Breathe out. Good, inhale, rock forward to your plank pose. We're just warming up the shoulders. Exhale, press back downward facing dog from the core, pull back. Good, inhale, plank. And keep that sensation of the hands on dials spinning in and the biceps spinning out as you move through these movements. Your exhale, downward facing dog. So flow on your own breath, we'll do two more. Breathing in, use the whole in breath to emerge in plank. Use the whole out breath like someone's pulling you from your low back up into your down dog. And last one. Good, exhale all the way. Good, this time rock forward to your plank. Option to come all the way down to the floor for cobra or into chaturanga, keeping the elbows close to the body and up dog. So cobra or up dog, your choice. Good, just warming up the spine. Inhale, take the right leg high to the sky, bend the knees, stack the hips. Good, spin the right shoulder down towards the floor and the right knee open more towards the ceiling. Extend the right leg long. Good, breathe in. As you breathe out, you're gonna come into plank, but keep that right leg straight so you're in a three-legged plank. So you hover. See? Good, and then inhale, take the right leg high. Exhale, right leg hovers long. Point the toes. Good, inhale, up and back. Exhale, right knee hovers long. Good, pull the knee into your nose and straighten it back to a plank position. Good, pull the knee into the nose. <laughs> straighten it back to a plank position. Good, pull the knee into the nose. Step the foot between the hands this time. Cartwheel up, warrior two. So front knee is over the ankle. Press into the outer edge of the back foot. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, flip the right palm up. Reach it up towards the sky. Flip the left palm back and take it behind you. You're gonna bend the elbows and try to interlace the hands behind your back. If you can't do that, no big deal. Just hold the right elbow and begin pressing the head into the bicep. So you're either in this little half variation or full bind. Wherever you are, keep the knee directly over the ankle. Press your head back into the bicep. And then again, think of knitting the front ribs together and lengthening the tailbone down towards the floor. Three more breaths here. Close the eyes. Feel the breath big in the body. Good, and last two. Good, last one. And extend the arms, cartwheel the arms down. Listen carefully, take your right foot back to meet your left foot. So we're coming into a side plank, a nice good shoulder stabilizer pose. Reach the right arm up. Breathe in, you can take the right arm towards the top of the room, maybe lift the left hips, big breath in, and then exhale, drop it down, plank, chaturanga, or skip it. We'll all meet downward facing dog. And take the left leg high to the sky. Bend the knee, stack the hips as a first step. Spiral the left shoulder down towards the floor as you open the left knee more towards the ceiling. The heel is dropping towards your right seat. Breathe in and breathe out. Good, straighten the left leg. And then keeping the left leg straight, you're gonna come forward into your plank pose. So you're in three-legged plank as you breathe out. Good, inhale, take the left leg straight to the sky. Mm, exhale, plank pose. Left leg stays straight, toes pointed. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left leg long. Hold your three-legged plank now, breathe in. Breathe out, draw the left knee to nose, stay in your plank, sneak the leg back to three-legged plank. Good, second time, knee to nose, stay strong in the shoulders. Good, last time. This time, place the foot between the hands, cartwheel up for your warrior two. Second side, big breath in. So make sure your front heel is bisecting your back arch. Really activate through that back leg. Front knee is bent at 90 degrees. Breathe in, breathe out. Good, turn the left palm up. Take that hand to the sky. Bend the elbow, 
turn the right palm towards the back of the room and you're either working towards your bind and this is a nice side for me to show it is that you can use the strap if you don't have the full bind but you're working towards it this is a really nice use of a strap here right so you could be here and working with the strap and then the other option is just to hold the left elbow so wherever you are three more breaths keep the legs super strong pulling up through the arches of the feet we're here for three two and last big strong breath fill up all the way good breathe in reach the arms high exhale warrior two cartwheel the arms down listen carefully step the left foot back to meet the right this time second side side plank left arm high breathe in breathe out feel the shoulders gliding down the back shoulder blades are really firm supporting you good and then reach the left arm towards the top of the room maybe arc the body good exhale plank chaturanga or skip it And walk the hands to the back of the mat. Good. Inhale, take a half lift. And exhale, fold. Good. If you want, you can bend the knees here. And then I'm going to invite you to interlace your hands and take them behind your skull, right where your hairline meets your neck. And just traction your neck down. Glide the shoulder blades down your back so the shoulders are moving away from your ears towards the ceiling. But the elbows are just wide. And just maybe rock a little bit side to side here. Legs can be bent or straight. The idea is that we're just giving the neck some love. <laughs> Good. Final breath. Nice. Release the arms. Walk the hands forward. And we're coming into dolphin pose. So I want you to lower the elbows to the ground and you're going to interlace the hands. Quick note on interlacing the hands is that you want to interlace your fingers and then you want to pull the pinky finger in, right? Because otherwise all your weight is going to be on that exposed pinky finger. So make sure you pull the pinky finger in so it's inside the little house of your hands. Place the elbows on the ground and then just extend your legs straight. And you can just begin pressing the heels down towards the floor. And this is a really nice hamstring stretch. Good. So level one, you might just want to stay here and feel through the hamstrings. But try to really keep the shoulders over the elbows, right? So notice if you're way, way, way back here. Try to keep the shoulders over the elbows. And then level two, three, you may want to walk the feet in towards the elbows a little bit more. So you can let the head relax. The head should not be touching the ground at all. And then you can just play. Maybe lift one leg up and set it down. Lift the left leg up and set it back down. We're gonna be here for four more breaths. So just press your elbows down, magnetize your elbows towards one another, walk the feet in as close as you can, or if you wanna take it into a bit more of a hamstring stretch, that's also fine. You just really wanna feel the seat beginning to move above your head, get that sensation in the body. Good, and then walk the feet out so you're back in your plank pose. We'll be in forearm plank. Pull the navel up and in. We're here for three. Hmm, two. Think about those places in the body that kind of fell out of alignment when we were in the Tadasana and did headstand. Do it again here. Pull, you know, maybe front ribs closed, abs in, last breath. Good. Exhale, melt into Sphinx pose. Hmm. Glide the shoulders down and back. Hmm. Send the heart forward. Big breath. Good, and then exhale, press into your child's pose. We'll just take a quick rest before we do another shoulder strengthening exercise in that same position. Another note, just while you're in your child's pose, if you wanna kinda of look at the screen as you rest in child's pose, is that you can loop a strap, measure the strap to be about as wide as your shoulders, and you can loop the strap around your forearms. So in some of these positions, it can just help you feel a little more solid, whether you're here or here or wherever you're moving towards. So whether you're practicing for handstand, forearm stand, building strength for headstand, whatever it is, the strap can be a nice tool in that way. And just rock side to side in your child's pose, just releasing the low back. Mm. 
Good, and then we'll begin activating the arms again. So once again, press the palms into the mat, feel your armpits lift, whole arm lifts, biceps lift. Imagine the two hands on dials spinning inwards towards one another. Press the knuckles down into the mat. Spin the biceps out to the left and right of the room. Really feel the whole arm engaged like crazy. It's working so hard. And then inhale, come on up. Exhale, downward facing dog. So really learning how to turn on the arms is a huge part to any inversion practice, like headstand, handstand. Because we never want to be resting our weight on our head and headstand. It's all our core strength and our shoulder strength. The head should maybe be touching the ground, but there's no weight on it whatsoever. All the weight is on that tripod of your forearms that we've been working on. Inhale, rock forward to plank. Your choice, chaturanga. Or skip it. Okay. We're gonna do my favorite exercise for kind of finding that tripod of strength in the forearms. So you can come down to your knees if you want. Once again, interlace the fingers, take that pinky finger in. If you're using the strap around the forearms, that's great. Find your kind of base here. And then you're gonna extend the legs, and I want you to have the legs kind of halfway between what we um, just did. So halfway between plank and dolphin, right? So dolphins like feet as close as you can get them, and plank is obviously your body's parallel to the floor. I want you to come somewhere in between. So just kind of find where your feet are in between those two movements, two uh, poses. Good, and then press your elbows into the ground like crazy. Press your forearms into the ground like crazy. We're gonna inhale, rock forward, so your hand is directly over your fist, and exhale, press back, so your weight is behind your elbows. And we're gonna do this a couple times. Come forward, press back. Inhale forward, exhale back, take the seat higher. Good, inhale forward, exhale back. So you should feel this in the biceps, shoulders. Good, we'll do six more, it's not easy. And back, rock forward, really make sure the face is above your fist. Exhale, press back, pressing your forearms into the ground. Good, last three, last two, last one. Good, come on down, rest, child's pose. Maybe take the body side to side. Good, and then activate through the arms again, stretch the arms, spread the palms as wide as you possibly can, turn the hands as if they're on dials, left hand spins to the left, right hand spins to the right on those dials as if you're turning two knobs underneath the hands inward. Then in opposition to that, spin the biceps out, rock forward, and find your downward facing dog. Your choice, plank, chaturanga, or skip it. Good. Mm. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. So two options. Level one, if you're not ready to come into full headstand, I just want you to reach the right foot forward, cartwheel up, come into your wide-legged forward fold, so toes in and heels out, inhale, half lift, and exhale, fold. And you can kind of practice, and maybe you take your feet a little bit wider than you normally would. See if you can get your forearms on the ground, and then just feel the seat above the head. So again, this is the same benefits as a full-on headstand, right? Because we have the heart above the head, we are in an inversion. So level one, you can kind of just play there. Level two, three. <laughs> if you're interested in coming into headstand, um, you know, different teachers have different ways of wanting to teach it, but you can take a mat to the wall if you feel kind of not ready to do it in the center of the room at your house. So take it about four inches away from the wall. And then. Plant, find that tripod so the forearms are on the ground, pinky finger is in. And then we've been doing so much work without letting the head touch the ground. But the reality is that for headstand, your head does touch the ground. So you really wanna make sure the crown of the head is touching the ground. So the very, very top of the head. A lot of times people are kind of on their hairline, like where the forehead and the hair meet. You really wanna be at the top of the head. And then you can straighten the legs, walk them in as close as you can and just pause here. So level one, this could be a really nice place to still stay and hang out. Press your elbows into the floor so there's not too much weight on your head. Next step is to pull the knees into the chest and then use your core strength 
to line up the tailbone over the head. This is another place to just pause and hang out, press the elbows into the mat. And then option two is to gently straighten the legs. And then line up the heels above your head, lengthen your tailbone towards the sky, squeeze your inner thighs and heels together. You can stay here for as long as you want. If you're still up there, I really recommend pressing the tongue into the roof of the mouth. That helps me balance. Squeeze the inner thighs together, lengthen the tailbone towards the sky. And wherever you are, we'll all meet in child's pose, no rush. So if you're in the wide-legged forward fold, just cartwheel down. You can do plank chaturanga or you can skip it. And we'll just all meet child's pose. Good, and then just gently press yourself up just to kind of take a stretch to counter all the active work we've been doing. Let's just take a wide-legged forward fold for today. So if you need to sit up on a bolster or any props, please do. If you don't like this and you wanna have the soles of the feet touching and take Baddha Konasana instead, you're welcome to. And as a counter to the kind of strength and hugging in of the headstand, I'm just gonna suggest that you inhale, get long. And then you could do this if you were in Baddha Konasana, soles of feet touching too. Just take the left arm up and over. Mm. Spin the left shoulder down and back, look up. Mm. Big breath in, maybe press the right elbow into the ground or kind of anchor the right elbow against the inner right thigh to spin the heart more towards the ceiling. Mm. And then come back up. Before you change sides, just take a breath. Exhale all the way. Good, inhale. And exhale completely. Good, reach the right arm up and over. Nice little side stretch. Press the left elbow into the right thigh. Or sorry, left elbow into the left thigh. Spin the right chest towards the ceiling. Glide the right shoulder blade down the back. Make sure your feet are really flexed here. So in all of these seated poses, the legs have a tendency to just kind of hang out. And we really want to be toning the legs at all times. So press your thigh bones down into the ground as if you want to energetically lift your heels off the mat. Make sure you're flexing with the big toe and pinky toe side of the foot. Last breath. Inhale, come on up. Breathe in at center. And then exhale, option to fold at center. Totally pending your flexibility. You know, maybe just being here is enough, right? Otherwise, maybe you're coming down onto the forearms or even taking the head all the way down to the ground. So just see what feels right for you. Just three breaths. And good, press yourself up. We'll bring one knee, uh, one leg in, other knee in. So the knees are bent. Just take a short seat here. We'll just bring the hands to prayer right away. Just take a moment to close the eyes and be grateful for what the body can do. So a lot of times we look at poses that are just, you know, fancier, right? Like inversions and there can be judgment there sometimes if we want to be farther along in our practice than we are or frustrated that we can't be where we need to be. Keep coming back to this class and this practice. It's a really fantastic set up to really just open the areas of the body and tone the areas of the body that you are going to need to eventually come into headstand in the center of the room, if that's your choice. Just listen to the heart beating, filling the body once again with gratitude. Good, and then bring your thumbs to your third eye, so press the thumbs the space in the space between your eyebrows. Mm. And then drag the thumbs down the face, past the lips, back down to the heart. And gently open your eyes. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed this sequence. How far did you get in your headstand exploration? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed the class. Huge thanks to Yoga Outlet for making this video and this class possible. Make sure to check out the description below for details on all the props and straps and things that I'm using in these videos. And absolutely make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. 
so much love from my heart to yours. Namaste. Thank you.